Hello! So, I got a present, which is uh, a ridiculous present, to be fair, from the brother of a friend of mine, Thomas, and he uh, bought this machine, but is more into 3D printing now, and didn't use it. So, the friend of mine said, hey, are you interested in uh, having this one, because uh, he's not using it. So I thought, well, if it... Yeah, I'm a hoarder. <laughs> I can't pass on that one. <laughs> Although I'm uh, quite limited in space uh, lately. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just something I need. Well, I don't need it, but I, I cannot, you know, get it to be wasted or something. That's a shame, yeah. But I thought it would be interesting to make a tiny video about it because it's a very interesting machine. I've seen them many, many times in gazillion configurations, but I, I never seen them in uh, in real life. And they're different constructions. And this is the better one, I think. Uh, if you look at it, it's like, hmm. I mean, it's some good designing for a simple machine. It is uh, quite effective in not being insanely huge while the cutting area is still 60 long centimeters and 40 wide which is nice uh, and it has a cable chain that's luxury for me I don't have a cable chain there's limit switches on all axes I don't have any limit switches I don't even know how to use them in Mac, Mac 3 <laughs> because I never had one um, they all come with uh, small steppers that states they're uh, 3 amp, but uh, my 3 amps are like this, so I don't I don't think they are 3 amp, but I think there will be plenty enough for such a small machine. And it's a dual axis one, so you can use your hand as well. It has a hand wheel, which is quite nice. It comes with a water cooled spindle, which is a surprise, but very nice. And look how how sweet and cute this one is. A tiny water cooled spindle. My two kilowatt one is as big as this air cooled one, and it's this huge. <laughs> it's really cute, really really cute. It's 800 watts, which or it should be 800 watts. I I don't know if it ever reaches that amount of uh, wattage, but. Even if it doesn't, you can cut plenty of stuff with it. I think if it's really 800 watts, you can even cut like MDF in one pass. You might not like it very much, but I think it's possible. Not that I want to cut MDF in one go with this kind of machine. I mean, this size and this, especially the motor size. But yeah. So what's nice, it has extrusion thingies here, which I also never had. But in the end, I think having a bed of MDF that you will uh, skim off the top and um, demolish is easier. But for some, some aluminium work, maybe it, it might be helpful. There's a method, a friend of mine uses on a real CNC machine, like a top-notch uh, machine. Anyhow, he uses like uh, very thin plastics, like half a millimeter or something, and he laminates aluminium to it with some double-sided tape in a very nice laminator. And he puts that on his bed straight away and machine it. So maybe that's an option. Or I did put some MDF on here, but who knows? I'm not sure yet what to cut with it. There's nothing I cannot cut on my other machine that I can't cut on here, but I might be able to do some small work on here. Uh, but I wanted to uh, check what it's all, what it's, what, what everything is. So it uses SBR uh, linear rails here, uh, supported ones. And it uses unsupported ones on the Z and uh, uh, X. Now the construction is kind of weird. It has this 
sort of plate covering plane and then the whole X is just a Z extrusion hard to see but it goes like whoop 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 and then this piece is also the support for the cable cha uh, chain so that's an interesting detail now there is some play and you can even hear it especially in the X and Z and also in the Y every every X is actually so the biggest is here this is not how you like it but it's also on here well not it moves now more than it actually does because the table is moving as well but I can feel a clickety cluck but fortunately these bearings have um, those adjustment screws so I think I can get rid of that quite easily maybe they're not even no they're not even tensioned a little you don't want to like over tension them just enough to get rid of the slop I don't have room here that one and this one is also loose yeah no clickety click and it still runs now the Z it's harder to find out because I'm no, I don't know which one is wobbly I think both but hmm. they have tension screws here as well in these blocks I cannot find one in the X but I probably have to remove the whole Z to find out because yeah well I found them so on the back side so yeah in this case it would be nice to have like a few holes in this piece of aluminium so you can reach them and uh, no clickety clack of course there is you can uh, yeah you know there is movement here but at least it's better now see if the let's look if the Z axis has any well uh, since it's open now and I can reach it thought I'll add a uh, grease nipple and grease it up real quick but um, yeah I don't have such small small nipples mm, I have huge nipples um, this is so goddamn messy always oh nice I released tension otherwise it was like <laughs> Uh oh. I think I filled it. <laughs> so it squirted out the ball screw, so there is grease in there, which is good. <sighs> Don't know if you can overfill them or something. Probably you can, but. And then the Z axis. No. I should do the bottom side as well, but I can imagine that the... Will it be on the bottom side or... According to my specs, you can, then we're good to go for eight years. <laughs> Since my machine ran without for eight years. 
Okay, so I'm gonna put it back together, see how much wiggle we have. We'll, we will still have wiggle, but hopefully less. So another thing is that this plate is just a spacer. It's not holding these clamps, for instance. So you can see these clamps are made to be clamping the spindle. So this bolt will never be as tight as this bolt because otherwise you squish kind of your uh, spindle. It probably won't break, but it's not ideal. So I'm gonna swap one around. So here's the open version on the left and then do it like this. At least we have now two steady points like this instead of only here and there. Just an idea, I'm not sure if it works out, but we'll see. Yeah, there's still movement, it's hard to say. I mean, could be the shafts, but I hear still a do 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 do. So these bearings that I did adjust. Uh, might have needed a little bit more than that and with the this whole axis hanging on it right now oh, on it I have to rotate this um, yeah you can add far more force it's a lever so now there is some play again but far less than it was but not gonna pull it apart again not now at least And then you got the controller box, which, which is also a nice to have things in a box. Oh, was out of frame, but the inverter is a regular Chinese inverter and they work fine. Uh, I, heard, I heard a lot of horror stories, but mine worked for seven years and is still working and is sitting in a box. And now this is nice to have, like a control box thingy. It uses a printer port thingy, connection for the motors, nothing special, connection for the water pump and all the limit switch and I guess this, it has no marking but I think this might be for some sort of touch of plate thingy, I think, I'm not sure what else it could be. I might find out if I look inside here and I did like a small peek and I was not disappointed because I thought they would use a very cheap all-in-one board. Yeah, oh, that looks pretty nice. It's like how uh, my uh, machine is built up. Except this is much, much nicer and neater. Jesus, that looks... You even use all uh, ferrules and such. I don't even use that. It has a sort of meanwhile copy power supply and they used copies of I think let me see yeah the 542 so that driver one of the drivers there <coughs> Okay, and it works with 12 to 33 volts. So I was thinking if you want a little bit higher speed on your motors while still have a little bit of torque, you can increase the voltage, but there's not much room. So the power supply is 24 and it can handle 33. And we can check what kind of settings it's using right now for the power, for instance. On off, yeah, so it uses uh, 3 amps. Yeah, 3 amps, and it could be set to off off, which is 3.5 amps. I'm not sure if the motor is like that. I mean, they state 3 amps, so probably leave it. And micro stepping, if it's used, I don't know. Switch 1 2. It says on off, which is. 
on off 3200 that will be weird yeah it says on off why I say that it might be weird is because it uses a I mean that's the smoother, uh, smooth, smoothest method with micro stepping and the most um, accuracy, but it means it has to put out a lot of pulses for one rotation, mainly uh, 3200. So if you go really fast, it might run out of um, bandwidth on the parallel port. So. I would choose something a little bit lower, like 1600 or something, it's more than enough, or 400 even. It will run a little bit more jerky, or at least it sounds more jerky, but you can reach some higher speeds. Hmm. They even have a ferrite beat in there, and everything is really nicely done. I this is far better than I uh, thought it would be. It's, even, it, it's also far better than I usually do. Not, not usually, like far better than I always do. This is all nicely. They have connectors on there or spades, ferrules, um, everywhere ferrules. Now I want to know indeed what this is. This is some lamp cord, which is weird. The rest is all really nicely done. This is like a weird cord. And it goes to a jack here. So I think that's indeed for, yeah, for touch off plate or something. I could, there is a manual I believe, which is also a miracle. But anyhow, that's uh, not bad at all. Oh, it even has like a tiny, sweet emergency stop. Something mine lacks as well. I don't have any emergency stop. I don't have limit switches. I don't think my machine will pass any certification. This might, which is also a miracle. <laughs> So yeah, uh, I mean, uh, I think for that price, that's uh, pretty nice done. Now, um, yeah, if I can remove that wiggle, I think uh, good to go. And for most people, this size is more than big enough if you're not making furniture or loudspeakers like I would like to do. And this is great. So yeah, just this short video about this very cute thing. And I'm gonna fix this, hopefully. Fix this movement. Very cool. Thank you, Thomas. I need to find a nice spot for him. See ya.